Hello friends! My name is Megan Del Grasso and I'm the Res Life Director for the Leewood location. I'm so excited to be with you today. Something that you should know about me is that I have a love-hate relationship with road trips. I was a professional road tripper growing up. My grandparents lived 13 hours away and we would travel to see them three times a year. I vowed that I would never live far away from my parents so I didn't have to make my kids travel 13 hours just to see their grandparents. Joke's on me though because in 2021 my family moved about 15 hours away from my parents and brothers. Oops. But like I said, there are some things I love and some things I don't love about road trips. So here are some things that I love. First, the snacks. I don't know what it is about road trip snacks, but they're better and tastier when you don't eat them on the couch. When you are like in a car, they taste good. And I don't know why, but it's just a fact of life. I also love book tapes. Now, most of my favorite books I listened to on road trips. Back in my day, I didn't have a cell phone or the internet that I could scroll or watch TikTok, and we didn't have a car with a TV or iPads, so our entertainment was listening to a story. We had some of our favorite books that we listened to over and over again. Harry Potter, Chronicles of Narnia, and a book called My Side of the Mountain that was my favorite, and I always wanted to listen to it. And the third thing I loved was looking out the window. And maybe that sounds kind of lame, but there's something beautiful about being stuck somewhere where all you can do is look out the window. I loved the time to just look at the scenery and just think about life. But there's a lot of stuff that I don't love about road trips, and mostly that involves sitting in the car. The temperature is never right, and sometimes it just smells funky. My brother always got the smelliest chips to eat on our road trip. And sometimes it's just too long sitting in the car. The story I wanna share with you today also talks about a pretty lengthy road trip that a man named Abram took with his family. We find it in the Bible in Genesis 12. Basically, God tells Abram to leave his home and go somewhere else and there's no map included or directions. This is what the Bible says about it. The Lord said to Abram, leave your land, your family, and your father's household for the land that I will show you. For me, that feels like a big no. Leave everything you've ever known and go somewhere else. I am not gonna tell you where, but I will show you. That takes some pretty big trust from Abram to believe God especially since Abram isn't taking the really good road trip snacks or book tapes. Let's actually take a second and take a look at where Abram traveled. Here's a map. He would have had to travel around the edge near the water called the Fertile Crescent because walking through the desert is probably not the smartest call. But walking near the water made a long journey even longer. So I tried to Google map it with today's equivalent. If Abram drove a similar route, it would take 22 hours by car. By car! Let's remember that cars did not exist. He was probably on a camel, or maybe even walking. And I have never ridden a camel, but it doesn't seem like it would be as fast as a car. Last map, I promise, but I love practical things. I tried to map it with walking directions. 384 hours, what the heck? To get there in 30 days, you would have to be walking more than 12 hours a day, every day. So why would God ask all of this of Abram and his family? And honestly, why would Abram say yes? Because if I was invited to walk for almost 400 hours, I would not do that, like ever. That sounds awful. But Abram didn't say no. And the key is in verse three, where God went on to say that through Abram, God would bless all the families of the earth. God made a promise to Abram that he would give him a family, that he would bless other people, and that really cool things were gonna happen in the world and lives would be changed if he said yes. So he said yes. 
And honestly, when you put it like that, I might have said yes too. Because if someone told me, Megan, walk 400 hours and millions of people's lives will be changed for the better. You're gonna be part of a really cool movement and you will bless so many people. I would probably walk 400 hours. And we know that God wasn't lying because here we are still talking about this thing. Our lives are being impacted by Abram's choice to say yes, even today. God chose Abram and invited him to do something hard. Just like Abram, we are chosen by God and invited to do hard things too. Don't worry, you won't be asked to walk 400 hours without good car snacks. But maybe you are chosen to show love to someone in your class. Maybe someone who's mean, or maybe someone that people are mean to. Maybe you are chosen to invite someone to church with you. Or maybe you're chosen to listen to your parents even when they're driving you crazy. Maybe you are chosen to move your family from Pennsylvania to Kansas to work at a new church. Anyone? Oh, that's just me. God chooses us all for great adventures and invites us to participate. But ultimately, God leaves the final choice to follow up to us. We can always say no, but saying yes will take us on a pretty amazing adventure. Will we answer God's call? Will we be part of God's grand adventure? As someone who's said yes a couple times, to God's grand adventure, I can tell you, the snacks are usually pretty good, but the stories and the views on God's grand adventure are pretty spectacular.